I want to do something a little different this weekend. I want to share with viewers a way to quickly and easily uh, simulate entire seasons of football using core mechanics from a game called pen and paper football, which regular viewers of this channel will, uh, will recognize that name, heard me talk about it in, in the past. Frankly, it's uh, the, the largely uh, the inspiration for all the supplemental rules in the EFHL uh, electric football rule book. Uh, it is a pen and paper role-playing game as such, but uh, where you actually play football. And uh, it has three different modes of play. The head-to-head -head play, which is uh, essentially a dice rolling to determine yardage gain. Uh, not dissimilar from my own dice game roll for yardage, but it's far less luck-based and more skill-based as far as uh, stats and so forth. Um, there's also uh, a team management front office mode. Uh, which happens during the off season where you recruit new players and uh, and you know spend your money earn your revenue from you know which depends on how successful your season was and then there's also a uh, fast action league play uh, which allows you to quickly determine the scores throughout uh, the entire week of play you might use this uh, for other games including electric football if you don't want to play every single game between every single uh, team in a league, but would rather just focus on your own team's games, you could use this to uh, quickly determine the scores for all these other games in your leagues. Um, I'll put a link in the description of where you can uh, purchase pen and paper football. It's only $1.99. It's the best two bucks I've probably ever spent in my entire life. I've gotten years now of enjoyment out of this little 51-page PDF file. Um, in fact, that's what I was playing almost exclusively before I reconnected with electric football. And like I said, if, you, if you're into my EFHL tutorial series for electric football, uh, particularly the supplemental rules, you'll recognize a lot of the concepts in pen and paper football. It is a tabletop role-playing game that requires dice, and I'll go through that in just a moment. Um, I'm not really going to do a, a deep dive review of the game here. Uh, there's, there are two reviews of pen and paper football on YouTube that I found, one from a very knowledgeable a sports fan who's put the game through its paces and, and loves the game and has developed his own custom uh, rules to supplement and enhance pen and paper football. And another review from a gentleman who couldn't care less about football or the uh, review he was filming. I don't think he even played the game. He just skimmed through the, uh, the, the rule book and then, and then uploaded his review. Um, it's actually a pretty good st a study in the dichotomy of humanity, watching those two different reviews of the game. Um, but what I'm going to show you is how to quickly uh, uh, roll scores for entire games with just, you know, a handful of dice rolls rather than, than uh, the other side of the coin in which you actually play each down uh, of every game of every quarter, you see. So uh, that's what we'll be doing here today. Now, um, you will need uh, some a, a various amount of dice for this um, and not just your regular six-sided dice. We'll be using these once uh, to create the uh, offensive and defensive ratings for each team in our leagues. You'll also need uh, a 20-sided dice. That's what you'll be using to generate the scores per quarter per team. And uh, also some, uh, this is optional, some 10-sided dice in case you're going to use my optional weather conditions rule, which is something I came up with. Uh, you'll notice these are two different colors. Um, these are technically known as 100-sided dice, but, you know, one of those is huge and it costs a lot of money. These are much, much less expensive. Uh, one color represents the tens digit and the other color represents the ones digit. And we'll only be using this if we uh, roll with the supplemental weather conditions rules. But otherwise, uh, once you have the uh, stats rolled for the offensive and defensive ratings, all you'll need is 20-sided dice to actually play this, this little uh, simulation game. So uh, very quickly, let me show you the, uh, uh, before we even get started with team creation, the uh, primary chart you'll be using. This is straight out of pen and paper football. Uh, D20 stands for 120-sided dice, and whatever you roll on the dice it results in this these number of points. So just as a quick example, let me just put this down here on the table where you can see it. Uh, hopefully you can read that probably when you've... Uh, Maybe not as easy to read on your mobile as it would be a, a laptop, but let's just say uh, 
uh, quick scenario, Cowboys at Steelers, okay? Cowboys in the first quarter, they roll a 17, which means that's between 14 and 19. They get seven points in the first quarter. Steelers have rolled, is that a nine? So they get three points in the first quarter. At the end of the first quarter, Cowboys are up seven to three, okay? And I'm going to just make a little note of that so I don't forget. Now, second quarter, Cowboys roll a nine, so they get an additional three points. Uh, and then the Steelers roll uh, an 18, so they get seven points. So now we got a tie game at the half, 10 10. Okay? Third quarter, Cowboys roll a 14, so they get seven points in the third quarter. The Steelers roll. Uh, 19, uh, so th seven points still. So, wow, 17 17. It's a tie game at the end of the third quarter. Okay, fourth quarter, Cowboys score. Ooh, no points in the fourth quarter because they roll a two on the. Uh, I, I should have been uh, uh, calling that out if I wasn't. So, fourth quarter, no points. So, if the Steelers can score, if the Steelers can roll a nine or higher on this 20 sided dice, they win the game. Steelers roll an eight. No points. This is going into overtime. So, uh, and this is, we'll, we'll assume this is a regular season game. So whatever the, the overtime score here is, the, the points stand. Cowboys roll a 15, uh, giving them seven points. This might be anachronistic, and we'll talk about this later. The Steelers roll a seven. Okay, the Cowboys have won this game. It would actually be six points rather than seven because... You know, they wouldn't uh, uh, get the, uh, they wouldn't even do an extra point at that point. So, um, well, no, we'll assume the Cowboys scored first. This could stand. Uh, so, 24 17 Cowboys was the uh, total for this particular uh, game we just did here on uh, on paper here with the, uh, with the dice rolls. That's in essence how this game works. Uh, basically, this chart is the key. Um, you know, whatever you roll on the 20-sided dice, now we can modify the dice rolls, too, and we'll talk about that in a few moments. But this is, at its core, that's how this game works. Uh, you know, this is straight out of the league play of pen and paper football right here. Okay, now, like I said, we can modify dice rolls um, by uh, various things here. But we'll talk about uh, the, the beefy aspect the beefy portion of this game which is going to be uh, generating offensive and defensive ratings for every team in your league now i'm rolling for this demonstration with an eight team league uh, divided into two divisions here uh, this is pretty much mirroring the xfl as far as you've got eight teams in the league so so we've got in the, the northern division we've got the cincinnati centaurs the green bay griffins kansas city krakens washington werewolves southern division we've got the houston hydras miami manticores Los Angeles Leviathans, and Phoenix Firebirds. Okay, so two divisions, four teams in each division. The league, the, the, comp, the league name is the MCFL. That's not Music City. It just stands for Mythical Creatures Football League. And uh, I can actually expand this very soon. Uh, at some point, I'll add the uh, in the Southern Division, the Denver Dragons, and then in the Northern Division, I'll add the, the Baltimore Basilisks, and then we'll have a 10-team league. But that's, that's here and over there. That's, that's down in the future. So the first thing we need to do is generate their offensive and defensive ratings, which will help us determine whether a team gets a bonus or a penalty on their dice rolls in this league play scenario. And we can do this quickly, uh, but very. I'll, I'll try to explain as rapidly as possible how it works in, uh, in uh, pen and paper football. Very similar to how we do it in uh, the EFHL rulebook, uh, at which point you would generate stats for... Uh, uh, all the offense, three different offensive stats and three different defensive stats, and then there's a table in which you would uh, add modifiers to come up with the offensive and defensive ratings. We're going to forgo all that by simply rolling uh, four six-sided dice and taking the three highest totals. We're going to start here with the uh, Cincinnati Centaurs. Okay, so they've rolled a five, a six, a four, and a two. We're going to drop the two. So the three highest dice totals are a six, a five, and a four, so that's 11, that's 15. So the Cincinnati Centaurs are going to have an offensive rating of 15, which is quite high, actually. All right, and now we're gonna do the same thing for their defensive rating. 
four six-sided dice, take the three highest totals, and that's their uh, defensive rating. Okay, this time they rolled a six, a four, and two threes. We'll get rid of one of the threes, so we'll take the three highest totals. So 10, 13, so 15 and a 13. That's actually a very, very nice result there for the Cincinnati Centaurs. 15 offensive rating and a 13 defensive rating. Now, very quickly, I'm just going to sit here and generate the stats for all eight teams in the league. Next up are the Green Bay Griffins. They roll a 6, a 4, a 3, and a 1. So they have a 13 offensive rating, which you will note is two points lower than the Green Bay or the Cincinnati Centaurs offensive rating. Okay, and now do the same thing again for the defensive rating 11, 12, 13. Defensive rating. Okay. Um, these scores could range anywhere from 3 to 18. 3 being if I accidentally rolled 4 1s, which would be a disaster. And 18 would be if I rolled 3 uh, 6s, at least. So, uh, that gives you a, a wide range here. We're going to move on to the Kansas City Kraken. Ooh, there's a 17. Okay. So that's a 17 offensive rating. And... Uh, a 13 defensive rating. So we're skewing higher using this method than with uh, the, the conventional uh, Dungeons and Dragons method. And now the Washington Werewolves. Of course, these are supposed to be professional teams, so I'm, I'm cool with this. Okay. Ooh, yikes. Three, four, five, six. Now we're seeing the, uh, <laughs> the agony of defeat here. Washington has a six offensive rating. That's so much lower than that 17 on the Kansas City. That's going to be a huge penalty on them at some point when trying to play against that team. Now, a defensive rating. Oh, that's much better. Nine, 12. Uh, you know, certainly the poorest offensive and defensive rating in the Northern Division. Uh, so, uh, that could be... Uh, that could well, you know, you never know, and that's uh, the whole point of this. What I like about this system, even the worst, the team with the worst stats in the division could still win a championship if the dice rolls are good enough. Now we we'll move on to the Southern Division, the Houston Hydras, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, offensive rating, and defensive rating, uh, eleven. Okay. Now, the Miami Manticores, their offensive rating is 11, 6, 3, and 2, and we discard the 1. I hope you understand that. And defensive rating is going to be also 11. Okay. Los Angeles Leviathans, offensive rating of 9. Which is actually probably the average score most of the time. And a defensive rating. 11. 14. That's pretty good. Okay, so we're getting a nice point spread here. Which will keep things interesting. Poor Washington though with a 6 offensive rating. Okay. Now finally the Phoenix Firebirds. They roll a 4. Okay, so 3, 4. So that's a 12. For an offensive rating. And their defensive rating shall be... Oh, no! Three, four, five, another six. So that's quite a point spread there. So let's just look at all eight teams here. Uh, Kansas City, by a, a long mile, has the best offensive rating, which, you know, should, you know, in theory, translate to the most points for for the season. Uh, Los Angeles Leviathans seem to have the highest defensive rating, should, which should translate into the fewest points allowed. I say should. It's all up to the rolls of the dice here. Uh, but it's looking like Washington and Phoenix may have the uh, toughest time. Phoenix is going to have a very tough time preventing uh, scores. They're going to have a lot of points against scored against them because of such a, a low score here. And, of course, uh, Washington's going to have a hard time uh, scoring points, uh, you know, not every team is the best team, you know, somebody has to come in last, so there you go, that's as quickly as that, we've created the offensive and defensive ratings for the, the eight teams in this league, 
Folks, you can do this for the NFL. In fact, I'm going to in the future. We'll do all 32 teams. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, probably use the 2021 season schedule and just, you know, simulate this. Uh, there is some bookkeeping involved with this. As you, you know, you're, you record the number of wins, losses, and ties overall and in the divisions. Keep track of their points at four and points allowed. That could come into play in case of a tiebreaker in the playoffs. And uh, now we've, we're ready to move on to the... Uh, actually, what I'm going to do is pencil in... I'm going to pause the video here and pencil in all their uh, ratings here onto the uh, score sheets, and uh, we'll go from there. Now, by the way, these little handouts are all custom that I've done myself here. This doesn't come with the pen and paper football game. Uh, you can find something very similar to both these pages at the end of the uh, EFHL rulebook. Just uh, go to the EFHL tutorial series playlist on my channel, and uh, the, a link to that rulebook is on every single uh, video in that playlist. But... Uh, here's uh, week one, the schedule here, and uh, let me explain offensive and defensive rating next. As I stated before, uh, we're determining the scores. We're done with these six-sided dice now, folks. Uh, we're determining scores by simply rolling uh, two dice per quarter at its core and uh, consulting this chart and comparing the total on the dice to this to determine how many points it scored. But we can modify the dice roll. And uh, the first way we're going to do that is with uh, disparities between offensive and defensive rating. Um, very quickly here, we'll use uh, Miami against Washington as an example. Pretty good example, too. Um, in this game between these two opponents, uh, what you do is you compare the, a team's offensive rating against an opponent's defensive rating. The difference is the modifier to your dice rolls. So in this case... Their offensive rating for the Manticores is 11, but the Werewolves' defensive rating is 12, which is that, that actually translates to a negative one for Miami, which means they would subtract one from the total on all their dice rolls to simulate that uh, Washington's defense is slightly better on paper than Miami's offense, but only slightly. Now, at the same time, Washington's offensive rating is only six. Miami's defensive rating is 11. So, unfortunately, Washington is going to have to, in this game against Miami, Washington is going to have to subtract five from all their dice rolls on the 20-sided dice. It's going to make it terribly difficult for Washington to score, to generate points in this game. But that's what this whole system's about. Um, meanwhile, uh, the Leviathans have an offensive rating of nine. The Firebirds have a defensive rating of six, which means in this game against these two opponents, uh, the Leviathans will add plus three to all their dice rolls. Now, Phoenix has an offensive rating of 12, but which is quite good, actually, but Los Angeles has a defensive rating of 14, which means Phoenix will subtract two from all their dice rolls for this game. I hope that makes sense. Uh, this is the uh, just a, a way to make all the games quite interesting, depending upon these stats. And remember, we just randomly determined these stats at the beginning uh, of the season. Um, with other rule sets, including my optional injury checks at the end of a game, which I'm not going to do for this demonstration, nor for this uh, particular project, uh, we could, uh, you know, permanent or season-ending season ending injuries could lower these stats as the season progresses, you know, for add a bit of realism, but I'm not going to fool with that for this particular uh, uh, project. Um, but uh, that's how uh, the disparity between offensive and defensive ratings works. It's I mean, folks, this is almost uh, identical to what I do with the supplemental rules in the EFHL rulebook, you know, as far as offensive and defensive ratings, giving giving more uh, bonus or bonus offensive or defensive stoppages. So that's that. this is totally the inspiration for that. Okay. So the only other modifier I want to add to sort of the, what I consider the core rules for this would be home field advantage, and that's determined by whoever's playing at home. For this an example, the Miami Manticores are at the Washington Werewolves, which means Washington, because they're playing at home, is going to gain a plus one bonus to all dice rolls. That's cumulative with whatever happened here. So they have a six offensive rating, but their opponent has an 11 defensive rating. So as far as that goes, uh, the Werewolves would subtract five from all dice rolls, but because they're playing at home, they gain a plus one for home field advantage, so they would only subtract four from all their dice rolls. Does that, I hope that makes sense. Uh, the Firebirds uh, would normally, against the Leviathans here, would subtract two from their dice rolls, but 
because they're playing at home and get a plus one to their dice rolls, they would only subtract one. So these modifiers are cumulative, you see. Uh, that does simulate the home field advantage for all these teams. Okay, and there are a lot of uh, optional rules I'd like to discuss, but first, let's just, I'm not gonna even going to, I'm only going to lightly pencil in these scores because this is just a, we'll consider this a, a little preseason scrimmage matchup. Okay, the Manticores uh, are playing the Werewolves. And because of home field advantage, uh, the Werewolves will be subtracting four from all their dice rolls. Uh, and the Manticores will be subtracting one from all their dice rolls as a result of this disparity between offensive and defensive ratings and then that, the home field advantage. Uh, and we can just go down the list here very quickly. Um, the Leviathans will be... Um, adding three to all their dice rolls, but the Firebirds will be subtracting one from all their dice rolls uh, because their uh, defensive or their offensive rating is lower than uh, their opponent's defensive rating. Uh, but home field advantage mitigates, you know, it would normally be minus two because 14 minus 12 is two, but because they're at home, it's only minus one. Uh, the Centaurs are actually going to get a plus three adv a bonus to their dice rolls because... Their offensive rating is 15. The Griffins' defensive rating is 13, so that's a difference of two, plus home field advantage, so that's plus three. Uh, uh, here's, we have a tie, 13 offensive rating versus a 13 defensive rating. Uh, so the Griffins get no modifier on their uh, dice roll. Finally, woo, the Krakens get a plus six to their dice rolls because 17... Minus 11 is 6. And the Hydras, let's see, that's 12. That would normally be negative 1, but because of home field advantage, it's actually going to be, they get no modifiers at all. So there you go. That's how it's going to stack up. So um, let's just very lightly pencil this in. Let's just go through the, uh, the game here. All right. Manticores at Werewolves. So uh, we'll, it doesn't really matter who rolls first, folks. So Miami rolls... A one, which is terrible, so they get no points, uh, regardless of modifiers. Uh, we'll talk about rules of one and twenty and optional rules here in a few minutes. Uh, the werewolves roll an eighteen, and then they subtract four from that, so that's actually a fourteen. So they score seven points in the first quarter. The manticores in the second quarter roll an eighteen. Minus one, because, you know, we've already written that down because of the uh, modifiers. So that's actually a 17, but that's still good for seven points. Uh, the werewolves roll uh, an 11, which would normally be worth some points, but they have to subtract four. So they've actually rolled a seven, which is worth zero points. So we're tied seven to seven at, uh, at the end of the half. Third quarter, Miami. Rolls a 13 minus 1, that's a 12. So they get 3 points in the third quarter. Washington rolls an 11, but they have to subtract 4. So that's actually a 7. So they've scored no points per this chart, which is what we're relying on here in the third quarter. Finally, okay, at the end of 3, it's 10-7 in favor of Miami, the visitors. Okay, fourth quarter, Miami rolls an 18, which is good for seven points between 14 and 19 there. And Washington rolls a 9 minus 4, so they get no points. Okay, the final score in this scenario, this imaginary scenario, is 17 to 7 in favor of Miami. And, uh, you know, that kind of stacks out with the... Uh, the stats there, it was always going to be hard for uh, Washington to generate a lot of offense because, you know, they have such a low offensive rating. You know, it's just not their season to shine, you know, offensively. They've got a pretty decent defensive rating, so now, there you go. That's how this works, folks. But that's just with the, uh, the basic core rules. I'm going to erase these scores, and we'll start applying even more modifiers to this. Um, and uh, what optional rules shall we begin with? Well, I think probably rolls of 1 and 20. We actually rolled a 1 in this game. 
And uh, this is an optional rule I've come up with. A roll of natural one, regardless of modifiers, results in an injury of a key player, which is actually going to uh, result in a negative one modifier on the team whose player was injured, who rolled this one uh, for the rest of the game. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it's cumulative. If you roll another one on the next quarter, it's another negative one. Just, you know, you know we keep adding up. It, you, there's like a 5% chance to roll a one on a 20-sided die. So it's, it's not going to pop up all the time. But that's a, that's a good way to simulate a key player being injured in the course of the game. Now, on the other side, if you roll a natural 20, or if a team rolls a natural 20, regardless of modifiers, uh, what you'll do is record the result which would be, well, whatever the result is with the modifiers applied. And then take note of that total, and then roll your dice again. So let's say uh, Miami rolls a 20, uh, but they've got the negative one modifier, so that would actually be a 19, which is worth seven points still. But then, because it was a 20, they get to roll again in this same quarter, and they roll a 15, which again is worth seven points. So in that quarter, they've actually rolled 14 points rather than uh, seven. And uh, if you roll another 20, keep rolling again. This this simulates some, some blowouts that can happen from time to time in football. Uh, it also, I find, tends to generate more realistic modern professional football scores, you know, that, you know, where you can sometimes get up in the 40s and 50s in the score, and that, that helps simulate it. Again, a 5% chance to roll a natural 20, same as a 1. But that's just a, you know, a little extra bonus rule if you'd like to use it. It's there for you. Now, let's look at another optional rule. And this would apply more to a, a league like the NFL or even uh, conferences in the NCAA. Uh, if a team is coming off a bye week, in other words, if they did not play, uh, play the week before, meaning that they're coming back fresh and rested, then they'll get a, a plus one bonus to their dice rolls. That's cumulative with home field advantage, if that applies. It's cumulative with the difference between offensive and defensive rating. And it, again, it's just a simulated team that's well-rested, uh, that's, that's had time to heal and, and perhaps to, to play just a little better. That's another optional rule uh, that you can use if you prefer. Uh, now, uh, the only other optional rule would be weather conditions. And uh, this is something I came up with. And I use this for not only uh, the uh, EFHL Electric Football rulebook, but I'm also going to integrate it into my, my own dice game, Roll for Yardage. Prior to every game, if you choose to do this, uh, you're going to roll, well, two 10-sided dice, or one 100-sided dice, which you probably don't have. Uh, by the way, these are actually, these polyhedral, that you can get these sets of polyhedral dice for, for a pretty good price on the internet, you know, five to ten dollars, uh, probably less if you look hard enough, but uh, they're not as expensive as I thought they'd be these days, uh, so that's good. But again, you know, I'm going to say that the red represents the tens digit and the blue represents the ones digit, and so we're trying to generate a number between one and one hundred with this method. So in this case, I rolled a seven and a four, which is seventy-four, which <laughs> uh, on this table... As you can see, 1 through 75 is clear in calm weather, uh, which results in no modifiers to the dice rolls. Uh, the bottom line is that uh, these modifiers on weather conditions apply to both teams, regardless of any disparities between their offensive and defensive ratings and any other uh, modifiers. It's all cumulative. So let's say for a scenario that you happen to roll a 90, 96 through 100 on a weather condition and you get heavy snow. Well, then that means for that game, both teams would subtract 5 from their dice rolls, uh, cumulative with any uh, um, bonuses or penalties from the, all these modifiers. That simulates how terribly difficult it is to score points in heavy snow. And as you can see, it follows a, a pretty linear pattern here. The, the worst weather being heavy snow, followed by freezing rain, freezing cold, heavy rain, strong wind, and then clear and calm. Those are your, your different weather conditions there. Um, now, common sense must be applied with doing this. If it's August and you're in Jacksonville, it's not going to snow. Um, if you're in Lucas Oil Stadium, which has a retractable roof on it, uh, weather conditions aren't going to apply at all. So th that's something you would have to keep track of. The venue matters. Now, if it's Buffalo in uh, the, the postseason, uh, then yeah, it could definitely snow or have freezing rain or freezing cold temperatures because they, they play in an open stadium. Um, 
you have to keep track of that kind of stuff. Uh, let's say Nayland Stadium in September, it could very easily, you could very easily have heavy rains or strong winds. Probably not freezing cold temperatures and not snow in September, not, not, in, not in East Tennessee. But those are the kind of things you have to uh, think about if using that optional rule. Um, at its core, you simply need to roll eight dice per game, you know, one, you know, one dice per team per quarter to generate the scores and just consult this. And you can add all these optional rules to make it a little more in-depth, a little more realistic, a little more immersive. But uh, that's how this works, folks. Um, so let's assume, we'll go back to Miami versus Washington here. Let's just pile all these modifiers on here at once here. Um, let's assume the werewolves play in an open stadium. And let's assume it's uh, an, uh, a preseason game, you know, in August. So uh, heavy snow, freezing rain, freezing cold would be off the table. I'll tell you what, though, as is the case with the EFHL weather chart, uh, if, if, a, if a result is illogical, just move up the chart until it is logical. Unless there's a dome or retractable roof in play, any uh, location at any time of year is subject to strong wind. Okay, uh, so you just got to use a little common sense on that. If it's if it's uh, you know middle of September and you you roll freezing rain in in Phoenix, well that wouldn't apply. Go up the chart. Would freezing cold apply to Phoenix in September? No. Would heavy rain? No. It doesn't rain that much in Phoenix. Strong wind? Yes, that could apply. So you know just you know, go up the chart till something makes sense. Okay, so very quickly, we've already established that Washington is getting home field advantage and the disparity between offensive and defensive ratings have resulted in a negative four on dice rolls for Washington and a negative one on dice rolls for Miami. Let's uh, consult the weather conditions chart. In fact, let's just use that 74. No, nope, let's see if we can get a result. Let's try again and see what we roll. Uh, a 76. Okay, we've got strong wind Okay, for this game. So we're actually going to... Now add a negative one penalty to these. So now Miami would actually have a negative two penalty for this game. And Washington would have a negative five. Now, we can't really do the, the bye week penalty as such. Uh, because uh, there's not enough teams in this league to really do a bye. Remember, this is simulating. I'm using the exact same schedule as the XFL. I've just changed the names. So... Um, uh, so we'll simulate this game now with all these new penalties. Uh, Miami at Washington. And uh, we'll put this weather chart out of the way. We don't need it anymore. And we'll put the, uh, you know, the chart that matters for this right here in the middle of the field. And uh, bears me one moment while I wet my whistle. Okay, here we go. Um, first quarter, Miami rolls. A 12 but they subtract two so it's actually a 10 so still score three points in the first quarter Washington who is at a disadvantage in this game really that rolls a nine minus five that's no points in the first quarter Miami rolls a three so there's no points there in the second quarter for Miami um, Washington rolls a 17 Minus 5 is 13, so they actually roll, score 6 points. How about that? The underdog, the werewolves, are now ahead 6-3 in the half. Okay. Now, third quarter, Miami rolls a 10. Minus 2 is an 8. No points in the third quarter. So that negative 2 is really hurting them, you know, as a result of the strong winds from the weather conditions. And uh, now the werewolves roll. Ooh, no points. They rolled a 3, so... Uh, a negative number doesn't result in negative points, obviously. It's just zero. Okay? So, I tell you what. The Werewolves are still winning this game 6-3. Uh, Those uh, strong winds are really hampering the uh, offense here on both sides of the ball. Oh, here we go. Now Miami rolls an 18 minus 2 is 16. So, that's good for 7 points. Now they're 10-6. But, Washington has one dice roll to try to come out on top here. Let's see. They roll a 19 which is actually a 14 when you uh, apply the penalty, so that's 7 points. Hey! 13. Look at that. Yeah. 
The underdogs, the werewolves, win this game uh, 13 to 10 against Miami. So, you know, that's a good demonstration. Even if their offensive and defensive ratings are poor, they can still win these games depending on the dice rolls and the, the penalties at play in the game. So there you go, folks. That's how this league play works. You can do this very quickly to, you know, just record the results for all the games for a week. And then there's a little bookkeeping involved. You don't have to do this. Um, I like to do this where you record the wins, losses, the points for, points allowed, and so on and so forth. We didn't roll any 20s or 1s to demonstrate that. But um, again, if you an optional rule is if you roll a, a 20, a natural 20, regardless of any modifiers, uh, record the results of the number of points scored and then roll again and add th that, that total, if applicable, to and you're applying all the modifiers again. And, and just add those totals together to get the number of points scored in that quarter by that team. A roll of one, regardless of modifiers, results in a, a bad injury on one of the key players, which will result in a negative one to uh, the team's dice rolls for the rest of the game. Okay? That's how this works, folks. I do want to thank John Stater, who uh, is the author of pen and paper football like i said this game has given me lots of joy over the past few years nice little nice little way to spend some time when you've got free time um i'll put a link into this uh, the, des the description of this upload where you can uh, purchase that it's only two dollars and like i said it's probably the wisest two dollars i've ever spent i've gotten a lot of uh, i've had a lot of fun doing this league play now there's also a really nice head-to-head -head game where you roll dice and, you know, determine yardage for every down uh, of every quarter of every game. That's also very fun. That's 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 more suited for two players, at least. Uh, but this league play is perfect for solitaire play, and it allows you to uh, uh, you know, play an entire season as long as you've got your uh, playoff uh, setting uh, uh, ready to go, how that's going to work. I'm just using the XFL's playoff system, so that'll be easy. And... Folks down the road, I can do this same thing with the NFL. I've done it at least a dozen times over the past couple of years, and it's so fun. It, it, but, you know, there is a lot of bookkeeping. That's more time-consuming than actually playing the game, is just keeping up with all the stats, you know, and the, the number of points scored. So in case there's a tie break re required in the postseason, you'll be ready for that for seeding. Um, but, you know, with the the NFL, is all you have to do is go on Wikipedia to figure out how to do that rather than coming up with your own. I will say that in pen and paper... Uh, football in the rule book itself he has uh, come up with different playoff systems for several different sized leagues so uh, that's handy and so if you're a fan of this sort of thing uh, if you like role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons that use the polyhedral dice uh, I think you'll really like and if you're a fan of football you'll you'll like pen and paper football because it combines all that in, in, into a really fun game system um, that uh, does adhere, for the most part, to the rules of uh, gridiron football. This can be adapted for professional, collegiate, or prep football. And what I'll do when I have time every now and again, we'll, we'll, we'll play a week of this uh, made-up fantasy league. And, uh, I mean, truly fantasy, mythical creatures football league, why not? Um, and that won't take much time. And most of it is going to be bookkeeping by me off camera. So, uh, you'll... You probably want to have a, a big old calculator handy, or unless you, you know, you're really good with numbers in your head to, to keep track of this kind of stuff. But uh, there you go, folks. That's uh, that's league play, which is only a small portion of pen and paper football. I'll uh, talk to you again real soon. Take care.